Uh, the title of today's message is, There Is No Other Way. We're going to be reading from uh, Proverbs, the third chapter, and verses 1 through 12. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you blind, bind in them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline. And do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. Since the reading of God's holy word to us today, <clears throat> trust, trust is not easy to do in this world. And the reason is because so many people betray our trust. It's very hard for us to trust in them. Someone once said, never trust anyone who says, trust me. <laughs> or perhaps more like, never trust a politician who says, trust me. So I was sitting in my easy chair and I came up with some of my own never trust lists, quite a few of them, but I think maybe you would agree with me on most of them. Never trust someone who says, I will never tell anyone else. Never trust a used car salesman who says, this car is in good running condition. Never trust a preacher who says, the sermon is not long. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Never trust a clerk who says that lottery ticket is a sure winner. Never trust a company that writes the check is in the mail. Never trust someone who says, I never inhaled. Never trust a dog owner who says, don't worry, he's never bitten anyone. <laughs> never trust someone who says, don't call me, I'll call you. Never trust someone who says, I've never done anything like this before. Never trust someone who says, don't worry, we'll never get caught. Never trust someone who says, then turn left, you can't miss it. Yeah, right. <laughs> never trust someone who says, I'll take care of everything. Never trust a mechanic who says, I'll repair it and make it as good as new. Never trust a dentist who says this will only hurt a little. <laughs> Never trust someone who says, if you get this tab, I'll get it next time. <laughs> Never trust someone who says, I can stop anytime I want. And then the last one. Never trust someone who says, you can eat pizza for breakfast, Oreos for lunch, and Chinese food for dinner, and maintain your girlish figure. That's just ones I just came up with, and I know the list can go on and on and on. In a world of distrust, who can we trust? Well, Solomon tells us about one person we can always trust. And what is this trust that Solomon is talking about? Three things. Put your trust in the right person. Always trust to 
uh, bless your life and show evidence of your trust. So let's look at the first one. Put your trust in the right person. Verses 5 to 7, remember, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Trust in the Lord. I just realized that 1969 was a very interesting year. A lot of things happened in 1969. Uh, Big things. For me, it was a big year because I turned 21 in 1969. Of course, when we reach 21, that's, you know, we think we've reached paradise, I think. We think we've made it. But also in 1969, we landed on the moon. Woodstock, do you remember? Woodstock, it's 50 years old. And the Manson murders. Do you still remember that? That was in 1969. Well, Golda Meir was elected Prime Minister of Israel on March 17, 1969, after serving as a Minister of Labor and Foreign Minister. Israel's first and the world's third woman to hold such an office. She was described as the Iron Lady of Israel's politics years before that same became associated with the British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. Former Prime Minister David Ben Gruen used to call my ear, I like this, the best man in the government, he said. She was often portrayed as the strong-willed, straight-talking Gray bun, the grandmother of the Jewish people. Golda Meir was quite a leader, no doubt about it, but she was also something else. She said one time, trust yourself. Create the kind of self that you will be happy to live with all your life. Make the most of yourself by fanning the tiny inner sparks of possibility into flames of achievement. Trust yourself. Really? Now, I do believe that we all need a certain amount of self-confidence in life. But there's also a limit to how much we can trust ourselves. And the reason I say this is because of what God says in his word. In Isaiah, he says, the Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is made up of only rules taught by men. It doesn't sound like we humans can be trusted. Our human hearts are deceitful. We say one thing and we do another. Sometimes our worship is not sincere. We do not think or do like the God wants us to do and created us to do. Consequently, we shouldn't put too much confidence in trust in ourselves. When we do, I think we're headed for trouble. Remember what happened to the overconfident Muhammad Ali? Remember him? He was one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time. You know, especially in his time. But his pride had brought him down. Remember he was raised as a Christian and he left Christianity to follow Islam or the Muslim religion in his adult years and He was diagnosed, as you know, later on in life with Parkinson's syndrome in around 1984, and it's a disease, as we know, is common to head trauma, which certainly is from the activities of such as boxing. And later on, he came kind of a broken man toward the end of his life, and and, uh, he was needing and to look up to the one who had created him. 
and bow before him. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. And I realize that his boxing may have contributed greatly to his physical downfall, but, but so did his self-confidence and his pride. Rather, trusting ourselves too much, we need to put our trust in one who is greater, higher, and holier. Verse 5 and through 7, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. We are weak. Remember that song, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. Yes, we are weak, but he is strong. And we are ignorant in many ways, but he is all wise and all knowing. And we often think wrong, and we do wrong. But he is holy, and he always does the right and loving thing, and we need to put our trust in him, all of our trust. A man said one day, he said, I, I went on a walk with my son, Zach. We went out into the country, and we were climbing around all the cliffs and the rocks and everything, and then all of a sudden, I heard a voice from above that said, hey, Dad, catch me. And I turned around, and here I see Zach joyfully jumping off a rock straight at me. He yelled first. He jumped first, then he yelled. So he was already in the air. I hardly had a chance to catch my breath. I felt like a circus act as I caught him. We hit the ground, and he said, for a moment, I, I could hardly talk. I could hardly catch my breath. And finally, my voice came back, and I just said, Zach, what are you doing? Can you give me one good reason that you did that? And he responded with remarkable calmness. He said, sure, because you're my dad. Likewise, we have a heavenly father whom we can trust completely. D.L. Mooney said, trust in yourself and you are doomed to disappointment. Trust in your friends and they will die and leave you. Trust in your reputation and some slanderous tongue may blast it. But trust in God and you will never be confounded in time or energy. Now, I think you've heard of this before. Isaiah 26 See if you remember the first these words. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is steadfast, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. And what do we sing at the end of every service? Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Second, allow trust to bless your life. Verse 8 says, this will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Wow, I need that. Doesn't that sound good? I like that. Now, I've heard a number of people say aging isn't for sissies. Isn't that the truth? We used to think that aging meant the golden years. But once we get there, <laughs> I'm not too sure about that part of being golden. Age and disease seem to go together as a lack of energy. So does this verse promise good health to those who put their trust in the Lord? Not totally. But in some ways, yes. Anytime we put our trust in the Lord and do right and live right and try to live a healthy lifestyle, we will be blessed with better health. Maybe not perfect health, but decent health. And decent health or good health is a blessing from God.
And we know that this life is not all there is to life. A better life is coming. And a better body is coming to all who are in Christ. So no matter how good your health is, you will be even better in heaven. You'll get a heavenly body that never wears out. Or will ever get tired. Does that sound good? I think it sounds real good. It sounds wonderful. Who in their mind wouldn't want this? Putting our trust in the Lord is the best way to live. I can't make it any simpler than that. Putting our trust in Him may well bless us with better health. But generally, Christian people are really conscientious when it comes to doing things that contribute to better health. And in this way, putting our trust in the Lord does bring health to our bodies. But always remember this. Living a godly life by trusting the Lord will benefit us spiritually more than anything else. This physical life is going to come to an end. And we look forward to a better life, an eternal life, because we have put our trust in the Lord and not in ourselves. And finally, show evidence of your trust. The last few verses, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. So honor the Lord with your wealth. That means give back a portion of your blessing to God and do not despise the Lord if he disciplines you for your good. Both of these thoughts tell us that we must show evidence in this life that we do trust the Lord. The proof of the pudding, how good the pudding is, I guess, is in the eating. The proof of our faith is what? The proof of our faith or our trust in the Lord should be seen in our deeds, how we live, how we take hardship in life, and etc. A preacher one time announced from the pulpit, he says, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is we have enough money to retire the mortgage on the church, and a sigh of relief went throughout the congregation. And then the preacher continued, the bad news is the money is still in your pocket. <laughs> Our giving shows how much we trust the Lord. That's really what it does. Do we trust him to provide for us with 90% of our earnings after giving 10%? Or do we only trust him to provide for us when we give nothing? When people don't give back to God, what does that say about their faith? It may well say that they don't trust God like they should. My son said to me one time, and he was real little, and he's a great, great kid, grew up to be a great man, very proud of him. But I'll never forget one time something happened, and uh, he said to me, my son said to me, Dad, I don't know how the Lord could ever forgive me for what I have just done. Now, perhaps you have said the same thing or felt the same way. And here's what I said. I said, son, I forgive you. And don't you think God is bigger than your daddy? Our trust must be in the Lord. If anyone can forgive us and let us into heaven, he can.
And I like what the little boy's version of the hymn, Trust and Obey, when he said that at Sunday school, they had been singing, Trust and Okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Everything is okay in Jesus. Everything. And we'll be okay. It'll be okay for us if we have committed our lives to the Lord. He will provide. He will protect. And he will keep his promise of eternal life. But we must put our trust in him. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen.